Hello everyone, my name is Daniel and I'm a programmer and an artist and today I wanted to make a video about a utility node that I made um, that's meant to be used inside of other node groups, a sort of really small piece rather than being a modifier by itself. Um, and it's essentially the same as the extrude mesh node that comes with Blender but hopefully with some improvements made to it. So the this is the node right here, I called it extrude2 because originally what I wanted was a node that could just extrude um, to a set position rather than extruding with an offset. And so at a very basic level, the extrude 2 node is the, a combination of an extrude mesh and a set position node, but then I also wanted to be able to create multiple loops between where I started and where I wanted to go, so I added a loops option. And then originally it only worked on edges, but I went back later and I added the ability to work on vertices, edges, or faces, just like the original one. It also has some additional outputs because of some of the new options, so you can look at the loop index to see where, the, where it originally started, counting up to the number of loops that you asked for. And then you can also see an index value that re remains consistent from the original geometry throughout, so you can see that, that all of these faces here were sort of created by face number 7 in the original mesh, um, which can be useful for identifying parts of the geometry later. So anyway, that's the node. It's very simple and pretty basic, but super useful. Um, just being able to choose how many loops you want for an extrusion uh, can save a lot of time and copying of nodes. Like I've said in some of my other videos, I think that uh, sometimes the best modifiers or nodes are the ones that you use the most often, and this is a node you can use a lot. It's just useful and you can use it in all sorts of other setups, so I think that scores high in that regard. Anyway, enough about that. Let's jump into the node group here and I'll sort of walk through uh, how it's working. The basic idea is that here there's a bunch of extrude mesh nodes and we're doing that inside of a repeat zone. So we do it multiple number of times depending on the number of loops that the user says they wanted to do. Now all of those extrude mesh nodes don't actually move the geometry at all. It stays exactly where it uh, was to begin with. So uh, an, an offset scale of zero essentially. And then at the end, after we have finished creating the new geometry, essentially with the extrude mesh nodes, there's a single set position node here, and we're going to set the position as a blend between where we started or where the mesh currently is and where we, where the user, what the user plugged into the position or the offset node as where they want the end of the extrusion to end up. And we can do that by blending between the original position and the final position based on the, the, that loop's index in the number of iterations that we did in, in the repeat zone. So that's the basic idea of how the node is supposed to work. Let's go ahead and walk through um, the, it node by node. So the very first thing is perhaps not that interesting, but, um, well, it's to do with this menu, which I should probably name actually. So... Menu sockets are funny because they don't actually show the name of the socket on the node, but they have a name that's called menu. Anyway, let's call menu type because that's... So the menu node is to determine if we want to do the operation on the vertices, the edges, or the faces, and that just goes into an index or an integer... Or the menu node outputs an integer is what I'm trying to say, and that's just an index, so 0, 1, or 2 depending on what you selected. And that's because we want to use this menu multiple times, and if you make a copy of the menu, you can't plug two things into a menu input, so to have different types. So instead, I'll put an integer, plug the integer into an index switch, and then we can uh, get our geometry and our different Boolean values with the different index switches. So depending on what kind of... So, uh, geometry type we want to work on, we need to evaluate the selection on that domain, so point, edge, or face, and we're going to output that Boolean value from this index switch. Then for the index value that I showed earlier, which is just potentially useful for a selection later, it says that all of these vertices or faces here came from face number seven in the original. Um, to do that, I do an accumulate field where I accumulate the value on that selection and, and I keep the trailing value so it's that trailing value starts at zero and counts up by one each time because this boole boolean value is going to be evaluated as either one or zero and then once we're done I'm going to multiply it times that same selection so that the things that are not selected all turn to zero 
which now that I thought about that is actually a problem because there would be a face that's also zero. So it might be better to use the tra the leading value, which would start at one. Anyway, so yeah, I think leading would be a better one. Otherwise, the first face would be the same value as the not selected faces. Anyway, then I am capturing that attribute. I actually need to capture this attribute now that I look at it on all three things. So we need another switch here, index switch. So yes, to be able to have the geometry that we need, we need it. We want to capture the attribute depending on what type of thing we're extruding. We want to capture the index value on either the point, the edge, or the face. So we will do that, and then we will pass whichever geometry is relevant through, and we'll pass whatever index value is relevant through. Then we're going to do a repeat zone. We want um, every time the repeat zone iterates, we're going to do an extrude mesh and we're going to extrude a selection. The initial selection should be the selection, and afterwards the selection should be the top from the extrude mesh. That way we only continue to extrude the extrusion rather than extruding everything multiple times, which quickly kills performance um, and doesn't get the result we want. So again, we have three of these because we need to extrude vertices, edges, or faces, and we can't dyna dynamically control this mode menu so we do all three and then pick which one is correct based on the menu socket which goes into the index switch and then zero one and two correlate to vertices edges and faces so we need to do that for the geometry and we need to do that for the top and side boolean values so then depending on what mode was selected one of these will be used and we will get the three values that we need out of the index switches then once we have that the top index switch can go straight to the output because whichever top was the last will be correct but for the side we actually need to do an or operation with all the previous sides so that we get all of them and not just the last one so this or so initially that's false, the side is unchecked, but then the first one, after we do the first extrude, we add that first extrusion's side selection to, to that and its output, and it, it will then loop back through. And then so on the second iteration, we'll have the first extrude's side plus the second extrude side, and we just combine them all together with this OR node here. Then after we have the top and side values, there's this iteration value. It's very simple. It just starts at zero. And then we add one to it each time. So for any given iteration of the loop, it will the value of iteration in the, as the as that socket will match the current iteration. So it'll start at zero, then count up to one, two, three, for however many iterations we're doing. So by the last iteration, the iteration value will be one less than the number of iterations we were going to do. And then the final value we want is this, what I call the index value. Um, and it's essentially, it's used as this loop output here. So when we look at the loop, that is an output from the extrude2 node that, that shows us that this was the original mesh, the first loop, the second loop, the third loop, etc. cetera. Um, we need to assign the current iteration value. So the iteration value is the one that counts up by one each time. Whatever it is currently, when we create new geometry, we want to assign that value to that geometry, but not the old geometry that already exists. So the way we can do that is by capturing an attribute on the mesh. And the attribute that we want to capture is going to be two different values, essentially. So we can add those two different values together. The one is going to be for the new geometry, and the other is going to be for the old geometry. So the way we can do that is by taking the top selection so the top is the new geometry so to speak and we want to multiply the one value by the top selection and the other value by not the top selection so those two can you could also just probably run this through a switch node would be simpler um, now that I think about it so <laughs> we'll do it this way instead because it's probably easier to explain so we'll do a switch node and we want to switch a float so if it's the top selection 
we want to use this value here, and that's the current. So if, if top is true, we want to use the current iteration value. Actually, we want to switch an integer technically. And if top is not true, then we want to use the index value that was already calculated. So that, um, that simplifies that setup a little bit. Does it in fewer nodes. Um, so to explain that again, because I think I complicated it and then I changed it. So <laughs> we're capturing an attribute on the geometry and that attribute is this index value that's gonna be output from the repeat zone. So every time we run the repeat zone, we capture that index value again. Now on most of the mesh, it's gonna remain unchanged. So that's the false from this switch. So false from the switch, we're just using the index value. So index value comes through here, comes back in here, runs across and into the false of this switch. So for anything that already existed in the geometry, we keep the original index value. For anything that is the top selection of the new extruded geometry, we will instead use the true value, which is the current iteration of the repeat zone. And so what we get from the end of doing that is this value here that starts at zero and counts up zero, one, two, three, four, for each successive loop um, from that's created by the repeat zone. All right, that's the repeat zone. Hopefully that made sense. Repeat zones, I find difficult to explain. I feel like the way repeat zones work is a little bit hard to visualize in your head. And even just the way the graph ends up looking ends up kind of complicated because you end up with a bunch of things running across um, to be repeated. I don't know. Anyway, after we've calculated all of this information on the repeat zone, we haven't actually done anything to the mesh yet. It looks exactly the same, but we've created a bunch of geometry. There's more geometry here than there was originally, but it hasn't moved at all. It looks visually the same. So the final step is to set the position to where we want everything to go. And we can do that fairly simply. Everything is where it started out. So then the other half of the equation is where we want it to go or end up eventually. And we can calculate that as just an, an offset from the current position. So the one tricky part about this is that the position, if we create a position socket in our node, so this position socket, it has a default value and we can't set the default value to be the current position. So instead I made a magic number. The magic number is negative 111.111 on X, two on Y and negative three on Z. So if for some reason you had a vertex at that position, uh, it would behave weird but that's such a specific number that uh, hopefully it's never used. Anyway, the reason for that magic number is then I can plug the position socket into this equals with that same magic number. And if the position equals that magic number, we will use the current position instead of the position that was given in as the input. So that way, if you don't plug anything into this position socket, it will use the default current position. But if you do plugs, but if you do plug, say a combine X, Y, Z into that position socket, then it will move everything towards zero here rather than um, using the current position. So that's a little hack to get around that. Um, like I said, if for some reason you had a vertex at this position, it wouldn't work. Then given that that is our desired final position, whatever it ends up being, whether it's the current position or some position that the user passed in as an input, we can calculate the offset vector from our current position to that position. So that's gonna be zero unless they plug something into that socket by subtracting our position from the desired position. So like I said, unless they plug something into the socket, that's gonna be zero. If they do plug something in, it'll be a direction vector from the current position to the desired position. And then we just add to that our, the user defined offset. So in our case, currently that's 0.5 on Z. And then we can blend from where we are to where we wanna go just by scaling that direction vector 
by the current index. So that's our that same loop index that we've looked at before. So it starts at zero at the bottom and then counts up. So if we look at it here. So if we divide that index by the number of iterations that we want, so that's our loop count here. So if we divide that loop index by the total number of iterations, what we get is this percentage factor from zero to one that starts at zero at the original position and ends up at one by the, the last loop. So then if we scale our direction vector for z from zero at the original position up to one at the final position, by the final position we will apply 100% of the change that we wanted to the mesh, if that makes sense. And halfway there we'll apply 0.5 of the change and so on. That's how you get the, the loop spread evenly like that. And then that value just goes into the offset of a set position node. And that's all there is to it. Then the only other thing is that index value that we captured on the geometry originally uh, goes to the index output. The index of the loop goes to the loop output, and then the top and side calculated values from the repeat zone go to the top and side outputs of the node. And that's the improvements or changes that I made to the extrude node. It is definitely slower than the regular extrude2 node, but if you only set your loop count to 1, uh, the difference is negligible. If you set the loop count higher than one, then the cost of the extrude two node is sort of the number of loops times the cost of your default extrude node that comes with Blender. So just be aware of that. Anyway, that's about it for the extrude two node. Um, if this is one of the first videos of mine that you're watching, um, please check out my website. There's more information about me and all of the different things that I've made. I've made a bunch of tools for Blender and geometry nodes that are available on Blender Market and Gumroad, as well as some other things. Um, and there's information about all of it on my website. So yeah, if you're interested in that, please head over there. Um, otherwise, that's all I've got for this one. Thanks for watching.